بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول محمد وعلى آله وصحابه معين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هل يستب الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما شفاء العي السؤال <coughs> So my dear brothers and sisters in the Shalat I'm going to uh, make an introduction of Muqaddima of Ibn Khaldun رحمه الله تعالى uh, Muqaddima uh, I studied when I was a student in the ulama because this is one of the you know in the curriculum of the ulama they have many new additions uh, you know compared to the older madrasad in India so one of the thing you know is no doubt uh, most madrasad they don't teach history one of the ulama has you know good uh, syllabus for history and Muqaddima al Khaldun is uh, one of the important texts that they teach they don't teach the whole text but especially his ideas about historiography you know history cultural history sociology his ideas about economics and mostly we we actually we learnt uh, his ideas about education uh, and my intention actually has been to teach that in length his ideas about education because other things you know very very teaches but people don't actually concern, people don't make effort to understand what are his ideas about education <coughs> but now you know faisal has you know asked me to say something about also his ideas about evolution because there are so many misunderstandings so that will take time because the thing is actually the, what he said about you know about uh, you know he, development of the you know he, he, human you know can see the creation nothing to do with evolution but anyway people have been misused so i will inshallah write that his actual actually text to what he has said and how we have to understand that uh, you know, I, then i realize it's very important to to learn that because people keep using him khaldun jahil and many many muslim scholars that they also you know had you know the they believed in the theory of evolution do actually nothing to do with theory of evolution it's something different so you can see you can see yourself you can read yourself you can understand what they have been saying so all this misunderstanding which you actually keep hearing it can be removed inshallah though it will take a lot of time you know, at least you know to explain this properly uh, maybe one hour more than that i'll come that to that inshallah as well <coughs> but but certainly inshallah in the afternoon if i have enough time I'll ex- expand on his theory of education because that is very, very important. Uh, and we Muslims are not learning from him. And, you know, he, he wrote all those things, you know, it, uh, almost 600 years. But uh, still you can see Muslims in education, do, you know, they are not as advanced as Ibn Khaldun used to. Actually, they are far, far behind th- th- than his time. So that is very important. You know, like you can see you have Al-Azhar uh, in Egypt. You have, you know, uh, I- I- you know, m- uh, centers of education in t- in Tunisia, in Morocco, in India, and in Pakistan. Nothing compared to what actually his uh, his ideas are. People people even don't make effort to understand what Ibn Khaldun has you know uh, said. You know, if you can develop further, that's fine. But the thing actually is, yeah, we even don't know what, what what they have been doing and how they have been teaching and learning. So, inshallah, that uh, I'll I'll present uh, you know in more coherent way. Inshallah. <coughs> Certainly, Ibn uh, Muqaddama is a really very important text. Like in Islam, if there have been few works which are important, like can see Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim or Imam Shafid al Risala, you know, the, or Imam Shatabis al Muafaqat, you know, these great works like Wayulla Dehlavis al Hajjatul al Baligha, certainly Muqaddama of Ibn Khaldun is one of the greatest works and has ever have been produced, not only in Islam, but in the history of the mankind. I'll clear in the West, no doubt, you know, studied many, many texts written by Muslims. But they always, you know, there are many things like Ibn Sina and Farabi, they have been writing, but they are out of date. But still they respect Ibn Sina and Farabi. But what Ibn Khaldun wrote, they still relevant. You know, his ideas about sociology, his ideas about economics, his ideas about education, his ideas about philosophy of history, they are so modern, people actually cannot believe. And that's why you can see the Western and East and West both agree to respect this man. Nobody has any, about, any doubt about the greatness of this man. Actually, Western people, they benefited from Ibn Khaldun more than Muslims. Muslims don't read him. Muslims, actually, most Muslims don't know who Ibn Khaldun is. But people in the West, they have been much, have much more respect for Ibn Khaldun. <coughs> you know, Al-Maqrizi, who just a little after him, a great you know, Arab historian in Egypt, you know, he writes, he says, actually, you know, anybody who knows history, when they read Ibn Khaldun, they know what Ibn Khaldun is. So Maqrizi said, Lam ya'mal ahadun mithalaha. Nobody ever has made anything similar to his muqaddima. It never happened. And then he said, Wa innahu la azizun an yanala mushtahidun manalaha. And it is really nearly impossible, or maybe very rare, very difficult, that anybody who makes effort to get near to that, to get the same thing. 
So you can see what Naqrizi said. It never has been any work similar to Muqaddimah of Khaldun. And he also said it is very difficult or really nearly impossible that anybody can do what Ibn Khaldun has done. And then, you know, British famous historian, uh, uh, you know, uh, Toynbee, the one who wrote, you know, great book, uh, you know, Fall, Rise and Fall of a, a Roman Empire, you know, a great, great man. You know, he said very rightly, you know, about, about Muqaddimah, you know, you can see, uh, I've written you know, the second paragraph <coughs> where he said about Muqaddimah, a philosophy of history which is undoubtedly the greatest work of its kind that has ever been created by any mind in any time or place. He's not a Muslim. He's not an Arab. You know, he's a British historian, but what he says about Muqaddimah is the greatest, you know, say the greatest work of its kind that has ever been created by any mind in any time or in any place. Nothing similar to that. And similarly, you know, the great British philosopher, you know, same, you know, Robert Flint, he, he so nicely he writes that, you know, nothing equal to that really. He said the other historians, they actually, they never, they are not worthy to be mentioned within Khaldun. So, you know, this, you know, his respect <coughs> always has been in the mind of the people. Really, if you read the work, you can see, you know, see he's so much ahead of his time. Nothing actually, nothing suggests that how this person actually can get these ideas other than his thinking and, you know, amazing mind. Because nothing there is to suggest. People who are writing that time and what people are producing in Madrasa at those times, it is nothing equal to Ibn Khaldun. Amazing mind, amazing thing, uh, you know, how he thinks. And that why he got amazing respect in his time. It, uh, you always find him near the kings and the rulers and the ministers, always big post. Because wherever he goes, everybody respects him. You know, empires, you know, and kingdoms of force and, uh, you know, rise and force in his time. But whenever the next king comes, he needs Ibn Khaldun. You know, when Taimur Lang, you know, great uh, uh, ruler from, from Central Asia, you know, uh, when he came to invade you know, all Muslim world, destroying every single thing, to when he invaded the, the Mashk, Damascus, that time Ibn Khaldun was in Damascus with somebody before him, other dynasties. And when dynasty fell down, you know, Taimur Lang comes, then they keep, they put uh, Ibn Khaldun in the prison. Because they don't know. And then in the night or in the morning, somebody mentioned to Taimur Lang, that you, don't, you, you know who you have put in the prison? Ibn Khaldun. And then, you know, he is amazed and shocked and he, he invites, calls him and listen to his ideas and releases him. You can see that people, enemy, the what friend. Nobody can actually, you know, no, no, nobody can afford, to, you know, to not benefit him. Everybody benefits from him. Actually, people think really that, you know, Ottoman Empire actually will establish properly. It has actually has got many, many ideas for, for Bukadma Ibn Khaldun, how to make a empires, you know, solid and, uh, and keep it lasting. Because his ideas about empires, how to keep it lasting, is amazing, uh, amazing ideas. Some of them, inshallah, I'll mention. But anyway, simple thing is this man always had respect in his time. Anywhere he goes, in Spain, in Morocco, in Fez, in Egypt, in Damascus, wherever he goes, people respect him. And wherever he goes, he gets post. Either as a minister, or judge, or teacher, whatever. He has been teaching in the main centers of learning. And, 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 and all the dynasty rulers who come one after the other, they can fall down, but he never falls. He all the time respected by the people. And certainly, his man really deserves to be respected. You know, like, uh, one thing, you know, uh, I mentioned, you know, this, uh, I, I wrote, you know, a few, few lines, few, few pages you have seen, actually. One thing is not necessarily that whatever Ibn Khaldun says, everything new. But certainly, he has put it in a way more scientific and systematic way. You know, some ideas of his, uh, of his about his, you know, historiography or history or how, you know, our philosophy history, <coughs> they are not very new. Many things have been, you know, done before, before that by Muhaddithin and also by the uh, historians who are more Muhaddith like you know, Imam Zahabi and other people. They have done. But the only problem has been when Muhaddithin applied their ideas of history, they only applied to what they think Islam, meaning is, those hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which are concerned to the religion. The ahkam, the ruling, the ibadat, basically that's what the concern was. They need not make any effort to apply, you know, those ideas, uh, you know, of, of their uh, 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 writing history to the serial literature, for example, to the literature of the conquest, Futuhat, or to the history in general. They did not make effort. That's why Muslim history, though it is still far, far better than any history at that time, any part of the world, because people did not have sense of history better than Muslims any time, anyway. But uh, Muslim history, you know, compared to what Ibn Khaldun's idea is, actually not so advanced, uh, you know, in those days. Reason is because they did not make effort to apply those, those rules and those principles 
to, to the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, and to the conquest to Futuhat <coughs> and also to rest of the history of, uh, 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 of Islam.